Professor Janet Holmes, uh, welcome to Warwick and Thank congratulations you. on receiving your honorary degree today. Thank you. Could I ask you just for a few words about how you're feeling about getting this award? Oh, I'm very honoured. That's the main thing. I think it's just such a wonderful uh, privilege to um, be given and deemed it by a university that I've got a very strong and close association with. So yes, I'm extremely um, delighted to have um, an honorary degree from Warwick. Thank you. And you mentioned there your relationship that you already have with Warwick. Mm. Um, you work with our, our, our Centre for Applied Linguistics. Yes. Um, how long have you been working with the um, About University? 10 years, actually. I um, met Helen spencer Oti some years ago, um, I think at a conference originally, and we have a very um, overlapping interests. We have, uh, we're both interested in intercultural communication and in workplace discourse. And so she invited me to Warwick in the first place, I think, just to give a talk, talk to the research students. And then that went very well. And so she said, would you like to come back next year? And so in a couple of years time, she um, asked me if I'd like to become an honorary professor here, which I was very happy to do. And so I've kept up that association now for nearly 10 years, I think. And I have um, two PhD students from Victoria University of Wellington who now work here. So that's another link. And one um, close associate with our workplace discourse uh, project who also works here, um, Joanne Gorey. Mm -hmm. So um, over the years, we've developed very close links. And um, it's been a pleasure really to come back every year and uh, renew those links and have the uh, opportunity to talk to the students. Um, Wonderful. Do you, do you think, um that international as angle is, is something that's very important for a university to be successful? Oh yes, I think so, in increasingly so. It's, you know, we live in a global environment, as everybody knows nowadays, and um, people in my area in particular, workplace discourse, um, have contacts all over the world. You know, we have uh, strong links with Hong Kong and um, with a number of universities in Britain and in Europe. We've got contact with Basel and um, um, I'm trying to think with Bern. So, yeah, so, uh, so I think this is a very important aspect of our work, particularly um, because Helen Spencer Oti and I work in intercultural communication, and so having links with people from different cultures is a very useful way of uh, keeping our research going in a new and um, innovative way. Yes. Great, thank you. Um, do you, do you think the, the discipline has changed? Have you seen many changes in how linguistics is, is taught or researched or studied mm. um, from the 70s when mm. you were first starting mm. out? Mm. Yes, I think it's changed in a couple of ways. Um, different universities have developed it in different directions. Um, my own particular speciality is in sociolinguistics. I'm interested in language and society and language and social life. And that's an area that has grown hugely since I began because when I first started teaching, um, sociolinguistics was a tiny little area which has really blossomed and that particularly in the university I work in we now have a professor of sociolinguistics and um, all our students take a sociolinguistics course and their you know the area has just grown and grown and grown and so that's been very important and the other related area is discourse analysis and um, so our work in workplace discourse in particular has um, we started it in 1996 and we were one of the first to think about looking at the way people talk at work and it, that's an area that again has caught people's imagination. They've realised it's important not just for the intrinsic interest but also for its practical value. So it has a lot of um, uh, implications and applications in the real world and that's been really valuable. Would that touch on um, issues like uh, for shorthand political correctness, the, the language that we use, the language that's no longer acceptable mm. in a professional environment? Well, one area that I'm very interested in is language and gender. So sexist language was an area that I've done quite a lot of work in, in the past. And yes, of course, we always have, um, we have views about what, uh, what's appropriate language in different contexts. I think the, the um, crucial catchphrase for sociolinguistics is context matters. So, you know, it depends. It all depends on who you're talking to, in what context, and in what um, role, and what your goals are. And people who use inappropriate language in a particular context are um, basically making a social gaffe, really. And so we would never say any language is bad or incorrect, but we'd say inappropriate. You know, not fine for you to swear, but only in these contexts. You know, not fine in the pub, 
fun in some of the workplaces we work in, but not in this one. <laughs> not in a job interview, though. <laughs> <laughs> there, I imagine, the goodness. Um, and the, cha the ways of language change, the language can, can exclude and also include. Do you, does linguistics or, or social linguistics play a role in promoting social inclusion or, or tackling mm. barriers? Yes, I think one of the areas where our own project has um, really made a helpful contribution has been with migrants. Um, and social inclusion is crucial for them, of course. And so um, because we've collected workplace discourse, we work with one of our colleagues in applied linguistics in Victoria, um, who teaches a course which is called uh, Communication Skills for Professional Migrants. And so what she does is she prepares them for New Zealand workplaces, which are often very different culturally from the places they come from. I'll give you just one example. Um, in Hong Kong, and I've had this experience myself, it's not appropriate to go in and talk about the weather in the morning or to have a social chat about what you did at the weekend. You sit, go into work and you sit down and you work. And of course, when they come to New Zealand, these hard-working professionals think that's an appropriate way to behave there. Mm -hmm. So they come into work, they go straight to their desk, they switch to their computer and then they put their heads down and everybody is looking around and thinking, so unfriendly, so unsociable. So very simple things like that, you know, to learning how to do social talk, learning how to um, do morning tea, chat and so on, um, learning about uh, how to how to complain about something when you're not happy in a way that's socially appropriate for the particular culture that you're in can be very fraught if you do it wrong. But uh, So those are the sorts of things that we, um, we've learned from observing in New Zealand workplaces and then turning into teaching materials. And one of the areas that we've worked with is the Ministry for Business, Innovation and Employment. And their website um, has used some of our materials both for employees and for potential employees and also for employers to try and educate them about the fact that the migrants are not being rude, they're just behaving in a way that's fine in their own culture but it doesn't transfer easily. That, that that context has changed and that's mm. fascinating. Um, if you had to give some advice to current students thinking about linguistics or mm. perhaps the, the, the students who are graduating this, this, this mm. summer and now facing their first careers, is there any words of advice you'd like to offer? <laughs> That's going to be the theme of my talk <laughs> at graduation. Uh, basically, my, my main thing would be to find what you love and to follow what you love because there's nothing worse than having to spend the next 40 years at a, in, a, in a research area or in a job that you just don't enjoy. So I've always thought, grab the opportunities that come when you can. Um, I tend to say yes if people ask me to do things um, because why not? Good opportunity. You know, you make mistakes, but generally it works. And um, and I think doing what makes you feel good and what makes you, you know, following your passion is very important. Um, I, I regret sometimes seeing students who are doing a sort of analysis of what will get them the most money or what will get them through the through the career structure fastest. And I think, well, as long as you enjoy it, because <laughs> you do spend an awful lot of time at work, you mm -hmm. know, over the years. And, and I think you have to have a job that you love and enjoy in order to get the best out of it. Wonderful. Thank you very much.